Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Watch your step as you enter the boat. If you're entering from the back, come up to the front. If you're in the front, just follow the simple instructions of your simple-minded loader. By the way, please listen to the boat loaders. They used to work at a sardine factory until they got canned. <laughs> uh, they didn't mind too much, though. They worked for scale. <laughs> uh, no? Uh, no one? Whatever. Anyways, in this sketch, we'll talk about the urea cycle, hyperammonemia, and OTC deficiency. The urea cycle is a series of biochemical reactions that convert toxic ammonia to non-toxic urea, so it can be excreted in the urine. The urea cycle occurs in the liver, and to a smaller extent, in the kidneys. The first two sections of the urea ungol river are murky and muddy, with dark hues that look like mitochondria. That's because the first two steps occur in the mitochondria. This NH3 cleaner spray bottle represents ammonia, which combines with CO2, shown by the black smoke coming out of that jeep, to make carbamyl phosphate. The park worker using a power drill to fix the Jeep is carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1, or CPS1, which is the rate-limiting step in the urea cycle. Synthetase enzymes usually require energy, and this particular step requires 2 ATP. Don't confuse him with CPS2, which occurs in the cytosol and is the rate-limiting enzyme in pyrimidine synthesis. That bottle of car oil and P battery on the Jeep is carbamyl phosphate. And of course, our park worker's nagging boss is telling him to work faster. That's N-acetylglutamate, or NAG, which activates CPS1. NAG is an allosteric activator that binds to CPS1 to make it work better. Whoever thought nagging would increase productivity? Anyways, NAG is made from acetyl-CoA and, more importantly, glutamate, a product of amino acid catabolism. Extensive amino acid catabolism produces excess nitrogen and increases NAG, which stimulates the urea cycle by activating CPS1. Ahead, an animatronic ornithologist trudges through the turbid torrent. Limber up the lips before you try that one at home, kids. He's studying the migration patterns of cassowary birds, which are considered to be the most dangerous birds in the world. We'll call him ornithine. A fellow ornithologist floors her transport boat, spraying car oil all over ornithine. Ornithine transcarbomylase transfers carbamoil onto ornithine to make citrulline. This step also occurs in the mitochondria, and is as messy as it looks. Ugh, attention folks, please direct your gaze to the left where you'll see the eighth wonder of the world. That's the lost city of citrulline. Almost as great as looking at the backside of water. Hey, Chad, what are you doing? Get back inside the boat, Chad. Sorry about that. Let's continue our journey. The next steps of the urea cycle take place in the cytosol, and the river is looking more clear. Unfortunately, the ornithologists aren't the only ones who want to find these cassowary birds. The jury ungle is a hotspot for poachers, who hunt the cassowary birds for its valuable dagger-like claws. This particular hunter patiently blows into an empty bottle of diet cherry cola with aspartame to attract the cassowary bird. No luck so far, though, meaning she's essentially just a very expensive wind chime. Aspartame contains aspartate, which combines with citrulline to form arginosuccinate. An orangutan sucking through a straw. Orangutan sucking. Orangutosuccinate. Orangutan suck. Arginosuccinate. Yep, that totally tracks. You'll see another park worker using a power drill to fix our coconut loving orangutan. That's arginosuccinate synthetase. Like CPS1, this step also requires ATP. This park worker is using a machete to cut the insides of another broken straw sucking orangutan. A little medieval, but hey. I trust your methods, park worker guy. That's arginosuccinase, which cleaves arginosuccinate into arginine and fumarate. Um, nothing to see here, folks. Any young children, please look away. Yeah, that includes you too, Chad. 
Please turn your attention to the trees where you'll see a fully functional orangutan that represents arginine. Over there in the corner is a fuming hot fumarole, which is fumarate. For the inquisitive adventurer, a fumarole is an opening in the Earth's surface that emits hot, fuming gases. Fumarate flees the urea cycle, finally free forever. Oh, no, wait, it just enters the TCA cycle. Round and round and round it goes, cycle after cycle, time upon time. Bleak it is indeed to be fumarate. A moment of silence, if you would. And we're back, just in time for our last step. Another park worker is seen spilling some water that's dripping in between the two halves of another dismembered orangutan robot. He's spilling water because he's arginase, which hydrolyzes arginine into urea and ornithine. This kid wearing a jury ungle crew shirt leaving the ride is urea, the final product that gets excreted by the kidneys. Ornithine just goes back into the cycle to hook up with another carbon oil phosphate, and the cycle repeats. Round and round and round. Yeah, I'm not going there again.